Good morning, everyone. And happy Sabbath. I see we have some visitors here today. Welcome. And I say welcome again. We are so happy to have you in our house. Well, technically it's God's house. But we are part of the church. So we just thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. Okay, today, uh, after church, we're having a men's ministry meeting. So tomorrow, we were scheduled for a church cleanup. But with our head deacon being out ill, with our assistant deacon being out ill, we are, led without, we are left without leadership of what needs to be done. So we're going to push that off for one week. And it's supposed to rain today, it's supposed to possibly rain tomorrow. So I think God is just letting you know what, take another day off. Just push it off another week. Although tomorrow morning, we are going to have our nominating committee. We're going to try to get that wrapped up. We are so close to crossing the finish line. So uh, if you get a call and you feel a gentle nudge of somebody saying, please accept, please do this, think about it because we prayed about it and we are trying to find the best leadership for this church. Nobody was born into a position in this church. We have grown into the different positions that we have within this church. So um, 9 a.m., that way we can be done rather early. In fact, last time it was rather short. We, we don't have much really to go over. I have a couple of ideas I'd like to bring up. Okay, next Sabbath. We are having a baptism. I, I really didn't hear much, too much of an amen. And now you realize all heaven rejoices when one soul turns to God. So if they can rejoice, I need to hear that we are rejoicing. So I have not said anything about a baptism yet. We're going to try this again. And we better do this right. The Sabbath lasts all day long. We're not leaving until we do this right. It is actually three baptisms. Okay, the, the angels are going to be rejoicing three times over. And uh, actually, I took uh, Henrik's grandsons, and I showed them the baptistry, and I told them about the baptistry, the way it works, and the purpose of it. So <clears throat> they were kind of excited. They didn't know that we had a baptistry back there. So, okay, I have really exciting news. Would you like to hear about this exciting news? Yes. yes. Next Sabbath... We are having not just one, not just two, but we are having three baptisms right here in this church. Can I get an amen? Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. No, amen. <clears throat> so I am really looking forward to that. And it is so precious when somebody turns their heart to God. And so I'm just so happy for that. On the third Sabbath, uh, on the 20th, we're having the Adventurers Club. And wait, aren't we having something special on the 21st? Oh, I said something special. <laughs> yes, the Adventurers are putting on their little bike rally, which I think is just so cool. And we are also going to be having a board meeting. That's not cool. That's a necessity because this is God's house. We need to make sure it's run in the way that he would have it. And then on the fourth Sabbath of this month, we're having a potluck and wait for it. Pastor Bennett is going to be ordained as a pastor. Amen. Let's try that again. You did so good that first time. Let's try that again. We want the people in all nations to hear our amen. <laughs> On the 27th, the fourth Sabbath, after our potluck, 
Pastor Bennett is going to be ordained. Amen. Amen. Okay. We're going to have to work on our amens a bit more. Uh, yes. Yes, we're having a community day on the 21st. Yes. Thank you so much. It wasn't in here. So, yeah. Uh, actually, it's going to be a social day, not a community day. <clears throat> The 21st, we're going to be, after the bike rally, we're going to be sort of hanging out. We're going to play games and things like that. We're going to enjoy each other's company. Just have just a lot of fun. Now, in May, beginning of May, before Mother's Day, we're going to have a special day, which is me, the community day, which we're going to be having craft projects for the kids to present their mothers for Mother's Day. So... Okay, that is all of our announcements today. Hey, you know what? You guys did great. Amen. We have some great praise songs uh, lined up for this morning. Uh, turn with me in your heavens to number 530. It is well with my soul. Number 520, which is also a wonderful song. If you turn with me there, we're going to sing, He Hideth My Soul.
This last Sunday, we celebrated that Jesus came up out of the tomb, that he rose. And I'd like to read from Philippians 4, starting at verse 4. And it says, Rejoice, I say. Rejoice always again, and I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but let everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and the minds through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful passage. Rejoice in the Lord. We need to walk around and let people know that we have a Savior who rose from the grave. You see so much misery on the streets today. Yeah. Our joy should not just be within our hearts. It should be on our face. We should say, I have a savior. He has improved my life. He has given me hope. I can give that same hope to you. So again, I say, rejoice always in the Lord and again, I say rejoice. Amen. Please stand for the intro. <clears throat> we'll sing number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and we'll do verses 1 and 3. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You loved us since before we were born. It says that you knew us while we were still within our mother. Lord, your love goes beyond what we can truly understand. What is love? We can only glimpse pieces of you, Lord, but we can see your love displayed every morning when we rise. Each breath, we can see your loving, tender care on the entire earth. 
even though the earth is groaning, I mean groaning with sin. Lord, we ask you to fill us with your love and allow your love to come from us. Allow us to be your tongues, your hand, that we can serve you. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please stand standing for the article of faith, which you'll find on the inside of your bulletin. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'll be re re reading responsibly. I'll be doing the light. We'll be doing the bold together. It is the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. It says, in Christ's life of perfect obedience to God's will, his suffering, death, and resurrection, God provided the only means of atonement for human sin so that those who by faith accept this atonement may have eternal life and the whole creation may better understand the infinite and holy love of the Creator. This, this perfect, perfect atonement vindicates, vindicates the righteousness of God's, God's law and, and the graciousness of His character, for it both condemns our sin and provides for our forgiveness. The death of Christ is substitutionary and expiatory, uh, uh, re reconciling and transforming. The bodily resurrection of Christ proclaims God's triumph over the forces of evil. And for those who accept the, the atonement assures their final victory over sin and death. It, it declares, declares the Lordship of, of Jesus Christ, Christ before whom every knee in heaven and on earth will bow. bow. Amen. You may be seated. Now is the time for our children's story.
Okay, today I'm going to talk about friends. How many of you have friends? A thousand friends? That's a lot of friends. It's kind of wow, but you can't keep, but you can't keep up with all of them, can you? It'd be hard to see them every day, talk to them every day, every single. A thousand's a lot of friends. Okay, well, listen. Uh, when I was little, I had friends, but they were all my cousins. I had friends at school, but. The friends, a real friend is, a, is someone that you spend your time with, right? Right? Don't you spend time with your friends? Yes. That's right. So I spent a lot of time with my cousins. We ate together sometimes, we slept together, uh, we played together. Anyway, we all lived in the same area, almost next door to each other, and it was really great to have that many friends to play with. We used to play church. We used to play um, kickball. We, put, we used, to, used to get these cans and make them in a way so that we could walk on them, like on, on a stilt. We used, to, we used to do a lot of things together, and we, we, we were friends, and we spent a lot of time together, so we knew each other, right? Friends know each other. Don't friends know each other? Yes. yes. Well, you know what? Jesus spent three years eating, sleeping, walking, traveling with his disciples. They were his friends, right? How many disciples did God have, did Jesus have? Twelve. You learned from this morning's lesson. Yes, he had 12 disciples, and they did everything together. Everything. They, ate, they did everything together. So you get to know people when they, you do everything together, right? So anyway, Jesus had these 12 disciples that walked and talked and ate with them. And, and he taught them so many things. And he taught them uh, how to love. You know what? Jesus knows the right way to love. So he can teach us how to love. Anyway, these friends knew that Jesus was going to be king, right? And they wanted to be number one. We talked about that this morning, right? They wanted to be number one. But, you know, uh, he taught them, in order to be number one, you've got to be last, right? Jesus did all kinds of things for his disciples, he was always last because he was, they were number one, one to him, right? So he taught them that they had to be last two because they had to be uh, serving and, and loving other people and teaching them how to love, right? Is that true? Okay. Now, you're twins. You spent a lot of time together. Do you think you know each other really good? Well, that's how Jesus was with his disciples. But you know what? No matter how much time we spend with each other, sometimes we don't know each other as well as we think we do. Because she has things she doesn't share with you, and you have things you don't share with her, right? Only what you share would you know about somebody else. You have a lot of friends? Do they love you, and do you love them? Do you do a lot of things together with them? Well, it's good. It's hard to have a friend or too many friends because you only have so much time in a day. But you, you love your friends. Okay. So my story today is about loving each other. Anyway. All of us were in the, in the garage one time. We had a garage in the way back, all right? And we used to play in that garage. And one day we were all playing, and all of a sudden, bang! And we thought, what is going on? It's like an earthquake. It was my grandma. She was learning how to drive, and she missed the driveway and hit the garage. We all ran outside to see what was going on. And she, she was fine. She didn't get hurt. The, the car got hurt a little bit. 
But, you know, that's one thing that all of us cousins share, even now. You know that I have cousins, I'm 80, 82 years old. And I have cousins that I still go see in Colorado. And that's one of the things we can still share with each other, that experience. The experience of a crab tra- crashing into the, into the garage, uh, our experience uh, playing with each other. And you know, we, we bonded. And to this day, we go see each other. Even at our age, we go see each other. E- even though we're 82. I'm 82, and they're, they're about the same age too. So, And we, t- we always get back together again, like old friends, and we talk and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, Jesus can be your friend, guys. He can be anybody's friend. You can talk to him anytime, anywhere. And it's not like he's, he's here with us all the time. How many people do you know that can be with you every single 24 hours a day? Mishma, yeah, yeah. Mishma, because you're together the, right now. But when you get older, you're not going to be together. You have a job, she'll have a job, and you'll have two different jobs, and you won't be together every minute anymore. But with Jesus, he is always there. You can always call on him to be with you and to help you out, right? So is it, are we lucky to have Jesus as our friend? Yes. yes, we are. We certainly are very lucky to have Jesus as our friend. I'm going to come over here and talk to you guys. Who's your friend? Uh, my mom. Your mom's your friend? Oh, that is so cool to have a mom as a friend. Who's your friend? You don't know? You're not sure yet. Oh, that's okay. Aziz, who's your friend? Your brothers? No? Your grandpa? And me too. What? And me too. Yeah. Anything. Anything? Okay. So, children, just know that you can talk to Jesus anytime as your friend. You can ask him for help or anything, and he's there for you. And he's always willing to do anything for you and to help you, all right? And uh, so, every day, think about Jesus as your friend, okay? Include him as part of all the friends that you have or that you will ever have in your life, all right? So that's my story for today. All right, dear uh, children. Um, I'm going to choose you, okay, to pray. And remember to thank Jesus. Remember to thank Jesus and to forgive him. Thanks, all those things, okay. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my sister. And thank you for my dad. And help the children learn. And thank you for what? What? And thank you for the ones that listen and the ones that learn. In God's name, amen. You especially for God, thank you for Jesus. You forgot to thank us. Yeah, that's okay. That's what he was trying to tell you. Thank you for Jesus. Who comes first? Jesus. Right, right. God. God comes first. Okay, guys. So we all learned something today, all right? Okay. Children, now you can quietly go with your parents, okay?
Then I line up a Sabbath. All right. We, we, it's a joyous Sabbath day. We want to welcome each and everyone that's here today. You know, um, as we go through this week, I, I found out that quite a few of our members were sick. And a few people are not here with their to us today because they're sick. So today, for our hands of blessing, what we are going to do, we're, we want to have a special prayer for those who are sick. Some even may be here who are sick. And for those who are not here today because of their sickness. Bob, will you come up here, please? <laughs> and Harry, you want to join us also? Hello, how about you? Um, I want four people at all the corners of the church. Because we want to have a blessings for each and every one today. Al, you want to go stand there? Harry, you can take this over here. Um, Leonard is sick. I know that DJ is sick. Um, Joan Boyd, she's not in town. Joan Somerville, I hope you always remember these people in your prayers because you're sick. Um, we have Lynn and Mace here with us. They're a blessing in our audience. Thank you very much for being here. You know, and um, a few of our other members who over the past few weeks have been going through, through different um, sicknesses because of, some of them is because of the change in weather. And just, um, you know, the devil is out to challenge us, you know, because he's like a roaring lion seeing him who he may devour. And whenever he get a chance to, to distract us from, from our service, then he does that. But God is good. And so we want to have special prayer. We also want to welcome back um, our members who are gone on their, on their mission trip. I see Reese is here today, and I saw Grace, and I didn't see Rochelle. But we want to welcome them back. It's a blessing to have you back. Um, we miss you greatly when you were gone, and, but we appreciate what you do. And, you, you know, some people will have to go to do work in different parts. And we certainly happy that you, you're, you're there and you're back and you're going to tell us your story at some point. So let's have prayer for those who are sick and for, and if you, if you need special prayer, this prayer is also for you, not for only those who, who names are called, but this prayer for all the members of our, our church family. So let us pray. Most gracious. Ever loving Father, who art in heaven. We thank you, dear Father, for being our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer and our friend. And we thank you, dear Father, for the opportunity that you give to us, dear Father, where we can come to your house of worship, dear Father, where we can fellowship together. You told Israel, dear Father, that let them make me a sanctuary so I may dwell among them. So, dear Father, we pray that you may send your Holy Spirit to be here with us, dear Father. And we are missing some of our members because of different illnesses, dear Father. Not to mention those who we haven't seen for a long time, dear Father, like the Holmans and the Bakers and others, dear Father. And, dear Father, we remember them. We never forget them, dear Father, and we know that you do not forget them either. Dear Father, so we are presenting them to you, dear Father, today, asking for your healing power over each and every one of them, dear Father, even those in our congregation who are made it here, dear Father, but they are going through different illnesses. Dear Father, sometimes it's mental, sometimes it's physical, and sometimes it's spiritual war that we all fight each and every day, dear Father, we pray. So we ask that you may send the Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us, dear Father, and to strengthen us, dear Father. And let, may we understand, dear Father, that you're a God who cares. And we do not even have to tell you what we need. You know what we need before we even ask. But, Father, you appreciate it even more when we come to you and we ask of you, dear Father, we pray. So we ask, dear Father, that you may grant each and every heart, as they desire, dear Father, the healing that you have for us. And may your will be done in each and every one of our lives, dear Father, we pray. We want to thank you, dear Father, to bring back those who went on the mission trip, dear Father. Not only those who from our church, but others who went, dear Father. And for bringing them back, dear Father. And may your work, as you have assigned them to do, be done, dear Father. Because you told us in your word that your word never come back void, dear Father. And we know it will not. 
Not now, not ever, dear Father, we pray. So guide us and direct us, dear Father, in all that we do. Dear Father, be with us throughout this service. And we ask for a special blessing for each and every one that's here and for those who are viewing online, dear Father. May everything be done decently and in order, according to your will. And kind Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory. In the name of your Son, O Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please stand for our hymn of praise. We're going to sing number 169, Come You Faithful. And Reese is going to play it through for us once. So we can hear it goes. love the lyrics to that song. It was just so beautiful. What a great uh, selection. Like I said, we need to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, today's offering is for our local church budget. Um, you can give locally in the sanctuary. You can also give online. It's very easy to do. And you can also invite the elders to come over, say hi, and we'll, give, we'll pick up your offerings too. But the best way to do it is in the sanctuary because we'd just love to see you or online. So uh, today's uh, scripture reading I'm taking from uh, Genesis uh, chapter 14. Then it says, and then Melchizedek, uh, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a great uh, he was the, great, uh, the priest of the God Most High. And he blessed him and said, blessed, blessed be Abraham of the God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the God Most High, who has delivered your enemies from your hand, I mean, into your hand. Then it says, and he, meaning uh, Abraham, gave a tithe of all. Tithe is so very important. Tithe sh helps run the church, but also Satan, with Satan, it was all about me. It was me first, me first, me first. And when you give a tithe to the church, you're showing who's truly in charge. So please remember to give not just the tithes, but also it's the offerings, because the tithes go to the conference to help pay for it. It's the offerings that we do here 
that help our church run. So, and I do love this church. The deacons will now wait upon you. Good morning, church. I was supposed to uh, sing this song last Christmas, but I didn't get a chance to. So it's called O Holy Night. Oh. 
Thank you. Please rise for the doxology. You shower down upon us, O loving Father. We have returned a portion of what you have given us back to you, Lord. Please give us the wisdom that this may be used in a way to hasten your coming, that we can find those people who have not heard of what you have done, and there is hope in the world. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please remain standing for the scripture reading, which will be brought to us by Susie Martinez. Good morning, church. So the scripture, scripture is found in Luke 24, 1 to 5. And it reads, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the, the spices that they had prepared to go to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they, they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down to their faces to the ground, but the, men, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Amen. And then the second reading will be in Revelations 5, 6 to 10. And it reads, then I saw a lamb looking as it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the fourth living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which they are seven spirits of, of God, sent out into the, all the earth. He went and took the stroll down from them to the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it to the four living creatures, the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each had one harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the stroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God's person persons for every tribe and language and people of nations. You had made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign in, on the earth. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> it's now time for our intercessory prayer. And we're going to sing number 517, um, just the first verse. And if you'd like to come forward while we, um, while we sing that song, if you have a special burden on your heart, please feel free to do so.
your precious heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, um, we come, we humbly come before your throne, O oh Lord. And first and foremost, Lord, we thank you for for loving us so much. We thank you for being there for us, Lord, for being our friend, for being the one that is always there. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us, O oh Lord. And we are so forever grateful that you are there for us, O oh Lord. Sometimes we go astray. Sometimes we fall down. Sometimes we just don't listen, Lord. But Lord, thank you for being that friend, that, that one that loved us no matter what. With open arms, you welcome us back and you, you call us back into your arms and, and you just take us in, Lord. And we thank you that you hear our prayers, Lord. We thank you that you hear our requests. And we can come before you and we can lay them at your feet, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, there's, as mentioned earlier, there's many that are having a hard time. They're, they're sick. They're having problems, Lord, coming into your house, O oh Lord. There's some that are just struggling with different issues, Lord. Lord, we just pray for them that they would wherever they are, Lord, that they would just reach out to you and then you would bring them in, Lord. And you would bring them to full health. You would heal them from their head to their feet, Lord. That you would touch their hearts and their minds and whatever they're struggling with. That you would just bring them through that situation, Lord. Each of us, Lord, has a, a journey that we each go through we have trials and things that we're struggling through, O oh Lord. But Lord, we know we can count on you. We know that we can hold on to your hand and you will bring us through. And when things get too rough, Lord, you carry us, O oh Lord. And we are so, so grateful for that, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that we become an outreach of this church. We become an outreach to the community to the city, that many would be touched by your love, O oh Lord, that you may be glorified by this community, Lord, that people would see your good works, Lord. not for us, not for us, O oh Lord, but for your glory, O oh Lord. We want to grow your kingdom. Help us to be your hands and feet, to be your voice, to reach out to our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, Everyone, Lord, that we come in contact with, help us to share your, your light that they may see how good you are, Lord, how loving you are. Help us. This community needs you. This nation needs you. The world needs you, O oh Lord. Help us to be part of that, Lord, and be an instrument in your will, O oh Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Lord. And we just lay all of these requests before you, Lord. We present them before you, and we thank you that you hear our prayer. We ask all of these things, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning again. Has God been has God been blessed to you lately? Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, has He really been blessed to you the the, the past week? Amen. This this next song um is called My Tribute, and I have someone special to help me perform it. And her her name is Michelle uh, Thompson. And me and her, me and her have, um, me and her have uh, practiced this song and this song and, and I've been, I sang it before, but I wanted to play it with someone for this special time. So the song is called My, My Tribute. Everything 
truly in debt. Happy Sabbath, Eileen. Happy Sabbath. All right. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing well. So today we're going to do a little bit of uh, Bible study. Is that okay? Okay. That's not okay? <laughs> it's okay? It's okay? Okay, that's what we're going to do today. Let us pray. Most gracious Father who art in heaven, we're here today because you have brought us here, each and every one of us, for a specific reason. So use us, dear Father, in the way you see best to do whatever you need us to do the way we can do it best. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So Easter, is it Easter or is it the resurrection? Some people call it the resurrection, some call it Easter. But we celebrated that like last week, Sunday, why? So I'm always curious. Because last week was March and now we're in April. So why does Easter spread out so wide? Why is there such a wide gap? If you haven't been curious, I've always been curious. So I went and kind of dig a little bit. Why do we? But and Easter, it's in the Bible. You know, I didn't think it was there. They talk about the resurrection, but in the King James Version, I think it's in the book of Acts. Not sure which chapter, probably chapter 12, they talk about Easter. But what is Easter? It's the Passover. It comes after the Passover. So I dig a little bit about Easter, and I'm going to share that with you for a minute before we study, because, and I'll tell you why. So Easter, they say it's a Christian holiday. The Paschal full moon. Easter, day depends on the, it depends on the moon the Paschal full moon, which is the first full moon after the equinox. The holiday is set to coincide the first Sunday following that first full moon. Me the metonic cycle, according to the metonic cycle, the Paschal full moon, which is the first full moon after, no, the Paschal, the metonic cycle, the Paschal full moon, falls on a recurring sequence of 19 dates between March 21st and April 18. So it says since Easter calls on the Sunday following the Paschal full moon, it can fall any date between March 22nd and April 25th. So any time between that time, we're talking about the resurrection of Christ. Wide range to me. Easter exact date can be as early as March 22nd or as late as April 25th. Depends on where the moon is. All depends on the solar calendar. Lent. Ash Wednesday marks the first day start of Lent. It's always 46 days before Easter. So why am I telling you this? Because I'm going to do an Easter sermon today. <laughs> and since you already celebrated Easter last week, uh, I'm not f far off because Easter can be anywhere between March 22nd and April 25th. 
So I was thinking, why don't we just celebrate it for the whole time? I don't think anything is wrong with that. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do an Easter sermon. In, in summarizing this, listen to this. Easter movable date, it reflects its connection to both the moon cycle and the Christian tradition. Hmm. Tradition. And I rest my case. <laughs> so the scripture reading that we read, I, I just want to read it again a little bit. Thank you very much, Susie, for doing the scripture for us today. Luke 24. Um, our whole study today is going to be covered within this area, the Gospels. Very, very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb carrying spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. So they went in, but they did not find the body of our Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this when suddenly two men in bright shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the woman bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? Wow, what would you have said? Why are you looking for the dead, the, the, the one who is alive amongst where only people who are dead resides? Think about that for a minute. In Revelation 5, verses 6 to 10, it says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the herd. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of holders, which are the priors of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the, blood of, by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nations. And hast made us un unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign with him on the earth. That was the scripture reading today. So let's talk for a while. So dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the most significant event in the history and the life of Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a day of rejoicing, commemorating the glorious triumph of our Lord over sin and death. In the darkest hours, when light of the world was extinguished at Eden, on the cross, hope seemed lost. The disciples mourned, the earth quaked, and the heavens wept. But this was not the end. It was the beginning of a new dawn. On the third day, the stone rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Jesus had risen. Amen. The resurrection is the pinnacle 
of Christian faith, the foundation of our hope, and the ultimate reason for our joy. The gospel account of Jesus' resurrection, it brings us in an inspiring message of hope and transformation. In the gospel of Matthew 28, we read that the woman who had come to the tomb were gathered, were greatly surprised to see that the stone that had been sealed in the tomb for days was rolled away. An angel appeared to them and said, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he had said. The resurrection is proof that Jesus is the Son of God and that his words are true. The promise fulfilled. The resurrection is a fulfillment of God's promise, a declaration that death, darkness, has been defeated, and life, light, reigns supreme. Jesus, in his rising, had bridged the gap between heaven and earth offering us a path to salvation and an invitation to partake in his divine nature. An invitation to partake in his divine nature. It's a call of transformation. So as we celebrate the resurrection, let us also embrace the transformative power it brings we are called to die to our old selves and to sin that ensnares us and rise anew in the image of Christ. Let this be a time of renewal, of casting off the chains that bind us and stepping into the freedom of God's grace. How do you celebrate the Passover? How do you celebrate this resurrection? Do you just glance at it, or do you gaze on it? In the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, we learn that when Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, went to the tomb, they saw an angel sitting on the rolled away stone who told them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Come see the place where they lay him, where they laid him. Jesus' resurrection was a, confirm a confirmation of his earlier prediction that he would rise from the dead and of his claims that he is the Son of God. Do you believe? Christ's body, after his resurrection, it retained the natural properties of a body. It is, it is one place and not in another. The scripture know it, it. The, the ubiquity, which omnipotence of his body. He is not here, he is risen. No rest for our faith, save in our Lord's word. If it be once received, then other things serve to confirm our faith. For first, he is risen, as he said, said the angel, and then he bid them, come see for yourself the place where they laid him. He's no longer there. This is not a magic. This is real. 
It is a su su sufficient argument to prove that Christ's body is not present in a place if sense perceive it not present, for the angel prove that Christ is not in the sepulcher by this reason. He said, come see the place where the Lord lay. He is not here. He is risen. The resurrection, it's not just an event to be remembered. It's a reality to be lived daily. How do we live it? We're going to talk about that. Each day we are to embody the love, the joy, and the peace that Jesus exemplified in every act of kindness, in every word of truth, in every stand for justice, we proclaim the living Lord. Beloved, the resurrection assures us that our faith is not in vain. We have an eternal hope, a victory that cannot be tarnished by the trials of this world. So let us hold fast to the truth, carrying the light of Christ into every corner of life. He is indeed risen. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, we get the story of the woman arriving early at the tomb with spices to prepare Jesus' body. They found the tomb empty, and the two angels appeared to them and said, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He is risen. The message of the angel is a clear rem reminder to us that Jesus is alive and it gives us the hope of eternal life. So finally, in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, it tells us that Mary Magdalene discovered that Jesus has risen and he appeared to her alive and well. He approached her and he tells her not to cling to him, but rather to go and share the news with his disciples that he is alive. You see, Jesus' resurrection is good news, which we have received, and through it, we are brought into a new life in him. And we must go and share the news with others who do not know and stop acting like he's still in the tomb. So, four gospels, Four different experiences. Matthew writes about it, Mark, Luke, and John. But they all proclaim the same thing, that he is risen. So how do you proclaim it? You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is an uplifting message that has continued to inspire millions of believers for over 2,000 years. It is the proof that Jesus is the Son of God. And that, that he has power over death. And that he has promised us, you, me, and everyone who believe eternal life. Therefore, let us give thanks to God for the gift of his son and for the hope that we have through his resurrection. How do we give thanks? How do you give thanks for the gift of eternal life. Let me tell you. It's the biggest test of our faith. In the book Mark 16 and verse 7, and verse 7 this was what Jesus said. He says, Now go and tell his followers and be sure to tell Peter. Tell, tell them that Jesus is going into Galilee and will be there before you. You will see him there as he told you before. Disappointment in Galilee was a testing lesson in faith. 
Is it after all? We can imagine them saying, is it worth the while to make the journey to Galilee? Is it? Can he who died on the cross, whose feet were pierced with nails, can he journey that far? That he should appear here? It's possible. We have heard the light before, but will he really appear in Galilee? Doubts. Do you ever have doubts in your mind about what you believe? The disciples doubted it. So their minds may have acted, and as they made the journey, every step and every hour must have tended to throw them out of their belief and hope. We're going to go anyway. We're not sure if he's going to be there, but let's go see. For there is nothing that so tests our faith in an event difficult of belief as to get out of the atmosphere of it. Let's prove it for ourselves. We got to go deeper. We, need, we have to gaze on Christ and what he's doing. The wanderer's lesson. You see, as we go away from it, but if this experience of the disciples was a, was a trial of their faith, it also could strengthen their faith. When doubt proves itself to be true, how do you come out of it? Are you strengthened? For faith is not hurt by doubt until it yields to it. The very weakness of faltering of their faith may be turned into strength by pressing on in its path and fighting doubt and resisting the appeals of the world. This journey of simply trust and stout adherence to hope was a fine preparation for their other experience, which was soon to come. There would come a time when not merely the faltering of their own art was against them, but all the powers of the world. Times when their only refuge would be their faith in the risen and the ascended Lord. Then the memory of this experience, crowned by its actual sight of their master, would come to their rescue. What do you have to hold on to when doubt arise? Do you glance at the cross or do you gaze on it? What kind of changes does it make to your life? Have you experienced the risen Christ? When you do, it will strengthen your faith. Their biggest commission you see, we find another explanation of their meeting in Galilee in the fact that Christ saw it fit to give their, them their greatest commission on the scene of their common laborers. That was where he met them. That was where he saw them. That was where they met him. For it was in Galilee that they had been called and set to do their work. It was in Galilee that the great sermon had been spoken, which lay at the bottom of the gospel, and here his mighty works were chiefly done. His presence in Jerusalem was incidental to his life and not the main field of it. Nor did Jerusalem so well represent the world that was to be displayed as in northern provinces. Galilee, let's meet in Galilee, Let, right where it all started. It is not improbably, all 
also that he thus intended to convey to his disciples some future and, and closer conception of the nature of his work. Go ye and make disciples of all nations. That's the same commission he's given to us. Do you accept the risen Savior? That's the commission that's given to you. How they may have asked, yes, you see the work I did right here. As I have done in these fields and villages before your, your very eyes. There, it was there that I turned water into wine. Go turn the common and the dull things of earth into glorious and inspiring realities. It was there I, felt I fed the multitude. Go make the bread of life to the multitude of earth, bread that shall also become literal bread to the poor and starving of the world and spiritual bread to those who don't know me. Go! It was there that I stilled the storm. It was there that I stilled the storm. Go, carrying the whole conquering peace of God to the storm and the worried nations. Bid them be still and know that I am God. He's not dead, he's risen. Why are you so sorrowful? It's the triumph of life. On that hillside and by those shores, I preach the gospel to the poor. Go, carrying everywhere the same gospel of consolation. In all these villages, I cure the sick and the lame and the blind in answer to their faith. You have the power to do the same as I did in the city and countryside to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Take my word to them and tell them that by faith in me they will be delivered from all their groaning and their miseries. That's needed today everywhere you turn. No hope. Go. Teach them that there is a divine delivering power at work in the world, that God is the Father and that he has sent his Son into the world to save it and to restore to him all who believe in me. More vividly still, he was able to impress upon their minds his comforting assurance. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. It's the same commission for you and for me. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I was with you as we trod all these paths from city to city. I never failed you. I taught and I cheered and I inspired you with my constant presence. So it will be all the way to the end. That's a promise that he gives us. You see, these things are for us also. We have a leader who is also a shearer in our life. It's not just a mission for the men. It is a message for women also. Because women, they play an important role in the delivery of salvation. How so? You see, it was the woman who came to witness the resurrection of her Christ. Where were the men? 
I don't know. You see, the false message which brought sin into the world and all of its woes was given first to woman and by her was communicated to men. This, the resurrection of the Lord, the healing of, of that early death wound was communicated in the same way. From an angel to woman, and from woman to man, and from man to the world came death. From an evil angel through the link of woman to mankind, the evil tidings spread and it covered the herd. From a good angel to woman, and from woman to men, and from men to the world came life, the life of the world. He is risen, and we have a message to deliver to the world, both men and women. The question is, are we the ones, or should he look for another? What happened to the message of Galilee? Go, he is risen. Do you believe it? Do you live it? Do you believe that assurance? Why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? What happened to our message, the three angels' message? Can we deliver it? Will we deliver it? Go tell the world, he is risen. That is the triumph of life. Why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? You see, on the cross, Christ delivered seven, seven blessings to the world. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. To those who were crucifying him, and to us, each time we sin and we crucify him anew, he bids the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Verily I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise to the repentant thief and also to all of us when we repent. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. When Christ, when, when Christ returned to his to reserve us a space at the right hand of the Father. All he wants for us is to repent so he can present us to the Father. Amen. Behold thy son, and to his disciples John, behold thy mother. To his mother Mary, and to his brother. You see, when we behold him, we become changed. Have you behold him? Or did you just glance at him? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? To his heavenly Father. You see, at times we will feel forsaken and in doubt and alone. But God never forsakes his own. Do you claim him? He always claims you. you. We are the one who rejects him. He never forsakes his own. I thirst. You see, that was to his crucifiers. We should be hungering and thirsting after righteousness every day. 
Or do you hunger and thirst after righteousness? Or do you forget that it's available for you? The righteousness that Christ gave to us when he went to the cross and he was resurrected. It is finished. To all who have an interest in salvation, is providing. Do you want to enjoy the rest? This is the path to the rest that he made available for us. Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. It's a testament for us. When we have done all that we can, we are in obedience to the cross. It's time to commend our life into the hands of God, where he will grant us mercy. And he is ready and waiting to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So in closing, it is finished. He is risen. In Revelation 5 and verse 5, it says, And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Why are you still weeping? He is not dead. He is risen. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. I line, he is not dead, he is risen. May this study inspire you and uplift you as you contemplate the profound significance of his resurrection. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is risen. It's the triumph of life. And he wants to give each and every one of us eternal life. He is risen. It is finished. Thank you. Quite appropriately, uh, we're going to sing number 526, Because He Lives. Uh, please stand with me.
So I align with his resurrection. We have the pr his proof in Romans 1 and verse 4. We have his pledge in Romans 4 and verse 25. We have a pattern in Romans 6 and verse 13, and we have his promise. He dies for us all so that we may live. Go tell it to everyone. Let us pray. Most gracious Father who art in heaven, we thank you, dear Father, that you send your Son to redeem us, dear Father. And we have been redeemed. So, dear Father, we thank you. We praise you, we honor you, and we glorify you. May it change your lives in everything that we do, in how we treat others, in how we treat our own lives, in how we treat the people of the world, and how we see ourselves, dear Father, as princes, because we have been redeemed. Kind Father, be with us when we leave from here, but not from your presence. And may your Holy Spirit dwell within us each and every day, in every aspect of our lives. Thank you, dear Father, for all that you've done and you're still doing. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and the deacons will usher you out. <laughs>